Hi, I'm Jeff, and this is Lithic Metals. Welcome to the lab. What we have here is approximately 381 grams of gold trapped within an alloy. Uh, what I did here is I mixed um, various carrot scraps um, with silver crystal, and I created an alloy of 25% gold. So we have one part gold, three, par three parts base metal, and uh, we're to the point now where it's going to go in the beaker and we're going to remove the base metal and uh, get into uh, the refining process here. So let's get it in that beaker and we'll get started.
All right, well, we've come to one of the funnest parts of the refining process. And uh, we're just about to drop the gold out of solution. So I've kind of sped through this. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure it's still gonna end up being a pretty long video, but um, for the most part, I wanted to try to speed through this and not cover every little step, but I'll give a, a brief synopsis right now while this, uh, well, these solutions are cooling. So, so far, what, what we did was we started off with uh, various scrap gold, uh, carrot, carrot scrap. And uh, so what I did was I calculated all of the various weights of the various carrots. Um, I didn't look over every single piece, but, uh, well, that's not true. I look at every single piece. Anything that looks suspect, I take out kind of check um, I look at every piece just to see if it's stamped if it's not stamped that's gonna that's gonna make me check it um, if it is if there's a ring that says 14 carat and it looks like a 14 carat ring it feels like a 14 carat ring I just go I just toss it in there I don't test it but so every once in a while the calculations can be a little off um, however what I ended up with was approximately 380 grams of gold in these solutions here. Uh, so we're looking at, let me get it right here. Yeah, we're looking at just over 12 ounces of gold uh, within these two beakers. Uh, once I calculated amount of gold, the various base metals within the carrot scrap. Um, I also added uh, approximately 850 grams of extra silver into this mix and then imported all of that material into an alloy and poured it into shot. After I poured it into shot, I put it into the beakers and dissolved vast majority of the base metals within a hot dilute nitric acid solution. So after doing that, a uh, good rinse procedure, I then put the remaining gold sponge into an AAR solution, um, an aqua regia solution, which is essentially, in this case, was uh, HCl, hydrochloric acid, gradually added the nitric acid. I didn't do a one-to-one -one ratio. Nobody does that anymore in refining. So, all right. Uh, <laughs> I wanted a brief synopsis, but this is already getting long. Uh, so after that, I dissolved the gold sponge into solution. It still contained uh, traces of base metal, which made the solution uh, turn kind of a greenish hue uh, mixed with this dark red that it was now that it's diluted it's 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 typical orange look uh, but mixed with that uh, it almost looks black it's it's wild so then uh after that we dropped that gold out of solution poured off whatever base metals that were trapped still in solution we took that gold that we dropped out of solution went through our various wash wash procedures uh, once that was done threw it back into the beaker Redissolved it in aqua regia and here we are now I filtered this solution twice I added three times the volume of tap water and ice made out of tap water um, the only time I'm going to use tap water in the lab is towards the end of the process with the gold um, because there are traces of chlorine and other stuff that if there is any um, silver still trapped in this AR solution it'll drop it out as a chloride that way and I can filter it out so I add volume to the solution with the tap water I actually let it sit overnight to, to see sometimes just getting it down to temperature and letting it settle some things will crystallize out and fall to the bottom so that's exactly what I did and I did notice a few particles in the bottom so filtered that all out and here we have our solution I added a little bit more water and ice and uh, did that to chill the solution 
because what we're about to do um, is drop the gold out of solution and that is an exothermic reaction. So that means this is going to get hot. Um, 12 ounces is kind of borderline. I could have done this in one beaker um, and been comfortable with that. I would just grab the 5 liter beaker and did it all in that, but I thought it might be more fun to just split it up and then I could add more volume of water and yeah, it, it adds a little bit more waste, but I thought, hey, we get to do the fun part twice now. So now if we're at this point now where our solution's pretty cold. Let's see here. Yeah, that's maybe not the best way to check the temperature of the solution, but it's pretty close. So it's about the, in the 40s. It's going to get much hotter. We are going to drop it out of solution with sodium metabisulfite. And I believe there's one more thing I wanted to add to that before I went any further, but it dropped out of my mind here. So, But here we are to this point. I'm going to use sodium metabisulfite to drop the gold out of solution in both beakers. I'll get this watch glass out of the way here. And what I'm looking for here is, I used to go by a ratio of one gram of sodium metabisulfite per one gram of gold. And it worked for a couple experiments based on the, the volume. If it was a smaller volume, that worked real, real well. But with larger volumes, I, it just didn't, see, it didn't seem like I needed that much. I was always left over with extra sodium metabisulfite floating on top of the gold, which I don't want. What I'm going to do here as I pour this in, in is, if I did this right, if I used up all the free nitrates in this solution, which I did by incrementally adding uh, nitric acid into our AR solution, watching it go down, and then even, even after that I burned, I uh, evaporated off some of the material, added more HCl to it, um, just to try to really use up all those free nitrates. If I did that, there won't be much bubbling or anything at all. It'll just drop down and instantly you're going to see a black to gold, well it's not gold, well, the brown look of precipitated gold dropping out of solution. You're going to see that black flash and then boom, gold's instantly going to start to fall. That's if I did it right. If not, it's going to froth a bit, I'm going to have to add more and then it's a mess and it's frustrating. So hopefully I did it all right. That's where it's kind of the moment of truth, and uh, if I didn't, I'm going to have to advance my calculations next time. Uh, but yeah, when, at the very end, when the gold is just about all dropped out of solution, you're going to see the edges of a little froth line, and it's going to have this, this yellow, this golden hue to the froth. When that froth comes up and it just bubbles white, that's when I'm going to stir it and double check with our stannous chloride to, to see if there's any gold left in the solution. But essentially what I'm looking for is this white flash of foam. And that and that usually tells me that most most of the gold is precipitated out. I might need to add a little bit more, but that's that. And if I do everything right, if I used up all the free nitrates and it drops well, it'll drop nice and heavy. I won't have a lot of stuff floating. I won't have a lot of stuff clinging to the sides of the glass. It'll drop down very fast, um, relatively so, and it'll have a tendency to clump together into little balls. Um, if, if there's still impurities and things like that, it's going to be a darker color. And it's going to be lighter and clingier. And, uh, it won't want to clump together, though. So that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for this little white froth that comes up at the end, and then I'm looking for my gold to settle quickly and to want to uh, clump together. So let's get started. Here we get to do it twice. So it should be fun. So if it's a success, it'll be doubled as joyous, and if it's a failure, then double frustrating. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Hopefully we'll see instant gold dropping out of solution here. I'm going to 
break up this ice a little bit. Jeez, not the weaker though. Now you see it getting a little frothy there. You see on the edge of that froth, it's yellow. That is visually, you can see that there's still gold in solution. Another thing I'm looking at is at the edge of my beaker you see this gold line. That'll also disappear once the gold is uh, dropped out of solution properly. Getting real close now. I didn't see that froth yet come up, but it's but it's getting close. So let's just check it before we go adding too much. Check it with some stannous chloride. Looks like the gold, geez, gold has dropped out of solution. I'm going to stir it up again. That ice kind of threw off the, the frothiness that I was shooting for. But I wanted to keep, since this is an exothermic reaction, it gets pretty hot. If it gets too hot, it tends to make the, the gold stick to the edge of the glass a little bit. To the beaker. No matter how clean I get it, it still seems like it wants to bond sometimes if, if the temperature's too hot. So. No traces of gold. All right. Stop right there and move on to the next one. Here we go again. Oh, stump out sodium metabisulfide. It's the uh, best local source around here, so.
are right there. So I want to check the solution now. From my eye, I'd say it looks good. No, no. A little bit of traces. That's why you do it. go just by the eye but it let, does let you know that you're getting really close Zero reaction. Now I feel confident that we dropped the gold out of both solutions. Just uh, clean off the edges with some distilled water, put the watch glasses back over the top to cover them, and we'll just let this stuff cool down and settle. Let's take a quick scan of the temperature here. So it went from mid 40s to in the 90s. This one's back down to the 80s already, so they cool down fairly quickly. 81. All right, so we'll let this settle and then we'll start going through the filtering and wash process. We'll go through that pretty quick. I think. All right, it's been 17 minutes since we dropped our gold out of solution. It uh, fell rather quickly. Over 99% has already dropped to the bottom. Uh, goodness. Can't get it in focus though. And I'm gonna let this sit for a couple hours before I decant it. Looks like it's gonna be some nice stuff to work with.
estimated yield was approximately 381 grams. So it should be relatively close to that. Three sixty one, three sixty one ninety five. All right, yeah, a little bit short of the estimated yield. Some of those pieces uh, must have not have been uh, stamped correctly or. Perhaps I could have looked at them a little closer. Maybe we had a few plated pieces in there. But all in all, pretty close to the original estimation. Not too shabby. That's a little over uh, 10, 11, 11 and a half ounces. Is that right? Good looking stuff right here. What a great collection. All right, now it's time to turn these in, turn this into something. Well, the customer wants a variety of pieces made, so I'm gonna get busy uh, weighing some things up here. Weigh in a few uh, separate little batches. We have our freshly refined lithic gold. Nice contrast. All right.
got real close, real close. <clears throat> Great looking bar. Get I want to get a little more on the top. Darn. We'll get
right, we have this collection wrapped up. We got uh, at least one piece of every series that I'm running right now. And uh, it is quite the collection. We got four Ben Franklins down here, four Mercuries up here. We got our certificates of authenticity. Number two Darwin bar. I think that turned out sweet. Really nice. I love them. All these vintage dyes, man, they're really something else. We have a, a little rarity here, a 1.55 ounce bar, an elongated bar. I don't do many of those in in, uh, in gold like that. Um, I'm gonna do at least one one ounce elongated bar this year, like I did last year. But uh, otherwise, just an oddball that we had with the remainder. Thought we'd do something a little different. But now it's time for me to get everything sealed up and ready for transport so we can get these in the, the owner's hands. Uh, I'm looking forward to handing them over. I get to do that personally this time, which is pretty rare. Usually I'm shipping them all over the place. Uh, but hey, thanks for uh, watching the video. Hope you like the pieces. Uh, if you haven't already, uh, click the like button and hit subscribe. And we'll see you next time. Thanks.